When you forge an axe, you're sweating because you work hard and you feel the fire heat and the steel is 1,000 degrees. And sometimes it even hurts because you get exhausted and your hands ache and you get blisters. But at the same time, it's so beautiful because the steel is glowing and you move like a dance. And just imagine that you, with your hands, can take a piece of steel and shape it into something that might last for thousands of years. To me, Axis is about something deep and extremely powerful. I love Axis. Think back 2.5 million years, then we were all monkeys. And we started using Axis, the first tool in the world, and became humans. With an axe in your hand, you can fell trees, you can make a log house, you can make furniture, spoons, plates, you can split wood for fire and you can hunt for food. And do this again and again and again, and you have created an entire society. But when I was 19, I didn't know all this. One day, I sat back at my parents' place in my room, and I realized that I wanted to take a one-week forging class uh, way up north, far away from home in the forest. <laughs> and I got completely stuck there. It was so real, so different from what I came from, like meat and potatoes for lunch, and the uh, blacksmiths were smoking pipe. And we didn't even have these centralized clocks that's supposed to show the same time. And then the main clock stopped sometime in the 70s, so it's always a quarter past one, and no one fixed it. But after a few months, something odd happened because the CEO, the big boss, was going off for a while, and they needed someone to stand in for him while he was away. So they asked me. And actually, not much changed, or at least not to start with. Because we forged axes, and we had like five customers. And honestly, it's a tiny, tiny company. Because our turnover is like what Volvo is doing in 10 seconds. Um, but the profitability had been poor for years. And then these customers came and they said, you have to lower the price or we'll stop buying from you. And one of them even wanted us to buy access from China and mark with their name and made in Sweden and be fine with it. No, I don't think so. We're not going to do it. So instead, we did something that's very difficult. We said no to all of the customers, one by one, because we want to care for the craftsmanship, for the axe culture, for our employees and their value, because it's actually people behind these axes. And the profit is not the most important thing. That is our values. And to write down these values. And then if some big customer come and tell you what to do, you say no. So we saved this 100-year-old company. We used to be seven, and now we're 16. And we have double the revenue, and the profit is almost 15%. And this is good, so the company survive. But it's not the most important thing, the profit. Because as we see it, we want to support and try to understand our employees and make something good of respect to their craftsmanship. 
We want to stand behind our product, our respect to our customers. And we want to make something useful and durable of respect to the nature. And as I see it, if you make anything, you have the direct power to influence how these things are made. You can decide what materials to use, how we use them, what we make, and what we waste. This is our footprint, our responsibility. And if all companies would do this, it would mean a dramatic change in the world. But now I want to make some points on Axis and why to make and use Axis today. We can learn so much from it. Because you know, an axe is like an iPhone for analog life. You can use it for everything and you can bring it everywhere. Except we don't have a flight mode, so you can't bring it on airplanes. <laughs> but if you watch someone pick up a good axe, then you can see how their whole expression changes. It looks like it awakens something, some feeling that got lost in this super stressed and efficient and digitalized world. It's like they get in touch with something. I don't know, perhaps the nature or perhaps themselves. And I think that overconsumption of crap is a great problem of today. <laughs> Just imagine, think about everything that has one or two year warranty. And then imagine like a huge pile of rubbish, all the rubbish in the world. But me and my friends, we decided to make a log house sauna. A small house with axes from trees. And we did it. And doing something with your hands like this reminded us that all things are made by someone. And this requires time and resources. And those resources aren't endless. I have the feeling that people sort of mechanically overconsume without even thinking, without even considering this bigger picture. But using access like this in the forest reminded us of this and makes me devoted to not be a part of this overconsumption. And another thing I learned, and I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes things feel pretty stressful. All these screens and information overload can be pretty overwhelming. Perhaps an antidote, a positive counterweight to this, can be to try doing something slow that not involves a screen. It might be as easy as that. And when I split wood, I feel like a totally awesome superwoman. And I, I taught wood splitting at a square here in Stockholm, Stureplan. And women came up to me that never split wood before or never used an axe in their life. And I show them some do's and don'ts. And they practice a bit. And damn, they split wood. <laughs> they were shining like the sun. It's like they move the limits forward for what's possible because they did something they'd never done before, and they got in touch with some power that they didn't know they had. So the ax is a symbol of empowerment. Imagine all this from one little tool, so important in history and today, because once it allowed us to build entire societies. But today, we still need to work on our society. 
And here I see that the acts and these perspectives and insights that you can get from it has a great role to play. I see an antidote to mass consumption. I see women's empowerment. And I see people living meaningful lives instead of just rushing through it and stressing for no reason. And this is something I want to spread to you all. You know, blacksmiths are the kings of the craft because we make the tools that everyone else uses, all the craftsmen. It's like we spread waves of creativity and quality and experiences all over the world. And when people use the tools, they continue these waves. So I, I want you to use the tools. Use them. Do not hang them on the wall, because then it's not working. But I want you to use them, and use the perspectives and insights that you can get from it. Let the axe empower us. Let it be the positive counterweight of today, more needed than ever. And we will continue to spread these waves over the world. Thank you. <laughs>